I want to look at drill through filters and how you can change the value that you've drilled through to whilst on the drill through page. So if we have a look at the report, it's easier to see what I mean there. So I have this report and very standard, I have a drill through page which allows me to more closely look at the player values. So I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to go drill through and I'm going to arrive at my drill through page. And when we do that, we see everything that we expect to see. Currently, this report doesn't have a lot of data because the football season has just started. However, the point is, we have our drill through. You can see here the name of the player, and you see here some values. Um, and we have here a slicer, which of course only has one value, and that's the value we've drilled through to. What happens, however, if the user wants to change that value? Well, quite often you'd have to go back to the front page and then drill through again and it's not particularly user friendly however as we can see we can't just select a new value from the slicer it's not going to work so what we need to do is have something that's going to remove this here which is our drill through value so to do this we are going to need six elements we're going to need two measures, two bookmarks, and two buttons, six things. So as you can see here, that's our first button, that's our first element. And of course that button is connected to a bookmark. So what are those two things doing? Well, we have a button here, and that button is connected to this bookmark. As you can see, when we click on the button, on action, the bookmark is change player DT, DT for drill through. And this is the bookmark. And what that does, it's very standard. It's going to remove the slicer values on this page, or the filtered values, I should say. So now, if I click on this button, you'll see that this disappears. Name is all. And now on my slicer, I can choose whichever player I want. So I'll pick one. And that's great. So you could think, okay, at this point, why do we need the other elements? Why do we need the measures or the buttons? And the issue with this is, well, we can look at the issue. If I do my analysis that I want to do here, and then as is very normal for user to go back to the first page, we can look at some data there. And after a few minutes or however long, I might say, okay, but now I want to go back to the drill through page because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a different value now. Now I'm looking at um, whatever, this person. I'm going to drill through. And because I already have a name selected in that slicer, which conflicts with a name here in my drill through, my entire page is blank. No values anywhere. Nothing name is blank everything so we need to get around that we need something to make the user aware and an easy fix for this conflict which is why i have this here which is also a button and you couldn't see that button before and we'll get to why in a second that's where the measures come into play so this button is connected to a different bookmark is connected to this bookmark. Now an important thing about this bookmark is that if we right click on it, you'll see it's not for all visuals, it's only for selected visuals. And the selected visual is this one. So this bookmark is set to clear this slicer. Because when we clear this slicer, it gets rid of the conflict. And then we'll be able to see the data for this person, the person we drill through to. We'll see that in a second. This button is only visible when we have this conflict because of these two measures. So these measures are really straightforward and that's what makes this for me quite an, a usable solution. First, we create a variance. And our variance is simply count the number of rows, count rows. On the table, 
in which the players' names exist. So that's the name of my table where the players exist. Count rows in this table. Return. So if if this variance, the count of rows, so if the count rows is blank, show me this text, the text you can see here. If it's not blank, show me nothing. Now we're saying blank because the, the count rows is blank because we have this conflict and the conflict results in a blank count rows. So we only see this text when we have this conflict because of the count rows. The color is exactly the same. So this measure is, the first part is identical. And again, you create a variance, count rows in the table where the player names exist. And we say, if the count rows again is blank, we make it a nice bright color so the user cannot miss it. We have this very, very yellow color. So it's very obvious, it's right there on your face. If it's not blank, then we use this hex code, which returns this um, transparent. I created a video a month or so ago regarding transparent value values. I'll link that. So again, if the count rows is blank, give me a yellow. If not, give me transparent, which is why now we have a blank count rows, which is why we see this yellow button the yellow button, which is connected to this. So now when I click on this, it removes this slicer value and we still have our draw through. If this slicer was selected for all, Sorry, if this bookmark, I should say, was selected for all, what would happen is it would remove the slicer value and the draw through value. Yeah, which we, what we don't want because then your drill through would be meaningless. So this, you have to set up this, the, the bookmark and then you right click and you change it from all to selected visuals. And that's how that solution works. So we can just go through it one more time. I've drilled through to this footballer, this value, and I can't select anything other than him. I can select on the slicer again, of course, but it makes a difference because I'm like double selecting, if you will. So I click on my first button, which clears the drill through because it's a standard remove all filters bookmark. I then use my slicer to select a new player. I then, as is normal, would navigate back to my page. You could suggest at this point, well, the user could just clear the value before they navigate back, but it's very unreasonable to su su suggest a user would do that or should do that. It's not user friendly. And even if they knew they, that issue exists, they'd forget. Of course you would. So I navigate back to my front page. Once I've navigated there, I do further analysis. I then want to drill through back to the, a different player. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna drill through to that player. Now I have this yellow button, which I cannot miss because my count rows is blank because of the conflict. Same here, I now see the text because the count rows is blank because of this conflict. This button is connected to this bookmark, which only clears this filter, this slicer, sorry, and not the drill through filter. So I click that button. The button then disappears because the conflict doesn't exist anymore. And now I have my new drill through value there. That's it, done. If you have any comments, you don't like the idea, you do like the idea, you have some suggestions to improve the idea, 
please put it in the comments. That's always appreciated. If you like the video, if you want to see more ideas of Power BI type stuff, then click that subscribe button. Thank you very much and goodbye.